And people are like, well, money's worse because you have no money because you're spending it all on drugs. And nobody was giving any pros. And he's like, does anybody have a pro? And everybody was like silent. And he's like, come on, like, you know, was sex better? He's like, a lot of times sex is great when you're on drugs. That could be a pro. Now you don't have that. And he's like started throwing up some of these like things that like are the reasons people enjoy doing drugs in the first place. And it's just a different environment. He's like, look, your job is to figure out how to navigate life you know, without this, it's not, you know, the experiences you've had or the experiences that you've had. And, you know, clearly it's not the type of thing that is all horrible or nobody would ever do Correct. anything a second time. Yeah. And, and absolutism there and the negation of, of appreciation, Yeah, I think is, uh, it, it's unfair to the person who had the experiences. You know? Yeah. I should say too, I feel I like I, you know, what I said before about um, the 12 step programs it was very negative. I don't I mean that. I have tremendous respect for that. That's ultimately how I got sober. But when you are in that place, it's a very difficult thing for somebody to, you know, open up to because it seems like a cult. There's all these people who are smiling, you know, who were saying that they used to, you know, do all of this stuff. But ultimately, I think that that, you know, method is works works you are know you a so. religious are you a person of faith or religious at all? so i uh, i was raised catholic i was raised in catholic church mm-hmm. um i was never somebody who was really religious because again i you know um i had a tough time um believing in things that i can't uh see or you know that sort of thing. I, have t- I had a tough time basically believing um, in religion, in the, the stories, the book, the, that sort of thing. Um, I ha- definitely have, you know, I'm far more open-minded now and have a lot, you know, more of a uh, appreciation for uh, spirituality, which a lot, of, uh, some of which I've, you know, gotten to kind of from the the 12 step programs and getting sober, but, um, and our wedding, my wife and I's wedding was in full church, full mass, full wedding service, hmm. um, which is what I want. I was the one who, you know, wanted oh, wow. that and pushed for that. Um, because I wanted it to feel like a ceremony, like a, you know, event. Um, I wanted it to feel like a big kind of, you know, life changing ceremony type thing rather than, you know, just this, in the park with some friends type thing. I wanted it to be, yeah, big deal. And I loved it. And I, you know, definitely, um, yeah, appreciate, have an appreciation for religion, but that's like most things in life also kind of a double-edged sword sometimes. So, but, yeah. Do you think any of your bands you had when you were living in Hollywood were good? No. <laughs> I don't think any of them were good. No. <laughs> oh, it's it's a, a, a great question. Cause, yeah. Because I mean, we we li- obviously live blocks from each other. Right. You know? Yeah. And like we know those stopping yep. grounds, and you know we probably played a lot of the same places: King yeah. King or Silver Lake Lounge or Sure. You yeah. Know, I I wasn't room. playing much because I was you know too kind of lost, and oh, that was wow. one of the things that when I finally got started getting sober. I really was appreciating is because I was missing, uh, not playing cause I didn't start playing for a long, a long time. Um, but you know, even getting to see, you know, the shows and see my friends and bandmates perform with their other groups because I wouldn't really leave the house, you know, were there any situations so. you remember like getting kicked out of a band because of your habit or, or you'd like showed up to practice and you're like, I'm sorry, I sold all my gear. <laughs> no, you know, like no any weird stories like that. I, you know? I definitely could not play many times, you know, when we were wow. supposed to be playing that's without a doubt that would happen where I couldn't, you know, take a lot of, you know, muscle relaxers. And then I couldn't fret the, the instrument, you know, guitar. Yeah. So, yeah. and I'd still keep playing or try to try to play or, I just get pissed when people would tell me, you know, to just sit, to sit down. Right. You know, I would just be mad at them. Of course. Right. <laughs> it's so so bizarre, but yeah, I would be yeah. There's a lot of times where I couldn't play. I didn't um yeah, I was at the time in which I sold all my stuff, I wasn't playing with anybody anymore anyway. I don't so. think it's that hard to understand that the the emotional response to to what they were giving you. I mean, cuz you got like 
you have your person. And yeah. then you have this shadow next to you. you yeah. Know, your shadow self. Sure. And you watch your shadow do something. And then you react to the shadow. And you're like, that can be a number of different ways. If it's something good, you're like, okay, positive. You know? Right. If it's not, then it's self-loathing. And then beating yourself up and yeah. negative. Or all that gets wrapped up and just turned into externalized anger towards somebody. Yeah, you know? you're like, right. I mean, all that, is what, that is how it happens. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, but that's interesting about it. I, I'm, I'm interested in this one question. As, as me being an acupuncturist. Yes. Could do you think you yourself could ever get acupuncture? Yes. Okay. I mean, I, I don't wonder. Like, your what would be your ability so, to be needled? You know? Yeah, I don't think that. I, so, I don't like needles, and I've never liked needles. Obviously, I you know would use them, but that was also not even my preferred transmission method. I would prefer oh. to you know smoke, okay. um, because it lasts longer, rather than needles are more intense but shorter. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and so I was you know. Just, I just kind of wanted to be high all the time, you know, just all the time. So whatever would get, you know, make it last a little longer, et cetera. So um, I think I could be acupunctured in terms of I don't have, like, a, you know, some people love, some former addicts love, like, getting their blood drawn and stuff like that. I'm not that way. I want to go, you know. go back to the thought where yeah. you said, like, you have a hard time slowing your mind down, those yeah. kinds of things. What do you do now to try to do that how do you replace forced relaxation so that's a good question i don't know i don't know that i'm good at that still you know i um so i i um i no longer smoke cigarettes i was a voracious chain smoker back then um but i do love cigars and pipes pipe tobacco you know that sort of thing that really relaxes me um more than, you know, a lot of other, like, activities. I'm a huge reader. I read all the time. Um, and I also just listen to music constantly. And that's probably the biggest thing. Is my like One of my very favorite activities is listening to music um, and reading, you know, the lyrics along with what I'm listening to. Oh, right? I love that activity. It's my favorite. I was that's just why doing I got it back into yesterday. collecting vinyl yeah. records. Because oh, I yeah. love to sit there. I'll yeah. make a fire, yeah. put on the record, and I'll read the liner notes. And exactly. I love them. It's my favorite. I, yeah. I do too, yeah. I For me, Paul Simon is like, you know. Oh, great. He's, yeah, the, the best. I mean, him. So, so no yeah. one's ever sat and taught you breathing techniques, meditation, I've, I tai have chi, done. Not Tai Chi. Like I've done meditation. I've done yoga. I've done breathing techniques. They all, you know, all the treatment centers try and instill mm-hmm. all of that stuff in you. But, um, I just don't do them, really. I am um, good at... I'm good at managing my reactions now. So these days, especially, I the, th- the thing about getting sober is it's, it's only... It's, it's only really about not using drugs or drinking a little bit. I mean, that's obviously the, the, you know, the main thing is, but once you take them away, like you don't still don't really know how to live. Right. So it's about teaching you basically how to live a life where you can be content and not, um, you know, be causing wreaking havoc on other people, your other relationships, et cetera. And, um, so I'm, I'm good at, uh, not saying anything if my reactions or my responses are not that is good tough one. it is a tough one i'm also good at like stepping taking a step back you know um because i i need to do that i just hmm. need to do that right i just need i need a, you know that little bit of time and i'm good at kind of resetting my mind with music i know what works for me musically and you know, I put it on and it takes very, sometimes longer than others, but that's really what it is. Do you keep a guitar here? So I have a, I have two here, actually. Oh, I've yeah, got a bunch of go. cases and stuff up there, but there's only actually two instruments here. Nice. Uh, no, that's not true. There's an electric in the office. Nice. And an amp in the office. Every um, once in a while, a little break. 
yeah. play a little bit. I used to carry a guitar in my car at all times, and then in May it was broken into and, and stolen. It's one of the folding guitars from Voyage Air Guitars. Yeah, yeah. It was an amazing... I, we actually just the, partnered the, the, with the them. The backpacker guitars. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, we just partnered with them as Honeydew because I've, I've bought many of their guitars throughout the years, and I've been in contact with them through that. And then when my guitar was stolen, Evita reached out to them actually and was like, hey, you know... My husband's bought these guitars from you. You guys have chatted before, and his guitar was stolen. They don't make any of the models anymore because they're, you know, solid rosewood or solid mahogany. Mm -hmm. Now they use um, oven coal and laurel and stuff like that. Um, And she reached out to them, and they were really nice and gave me a great deal on a new one um, that's that's oven coal and laurel. But it's, you know, pretty, and it sounds really good. And so they, you know, I sent the guy a couple pillows, and so we actually just do doing a partnership with them that goes into effect tonight. You make uh, like a camping pillow that goes... Yeah, we have a travel like, pillow. Like a, so, yeah, exactly. And that's set. what they said. Like, this is a great, that's you know, a thing. great idea. Well done. Yeah. That's so we just took cool. a bunch of photos on Friday um, of us. Like, at a, we went to a park and we brought our little travel pillows and the guitar and we brought, you know, chessboard and, a, you know... Um, books and we just kind of hung out at the park and took a bunch of photos because that's the new travel right that's awesome you're not you know necessarily jet setting but it was great and we had these pillows we were able to like just relax and you know it was nice and then now we've got these photos too that we'll use promotionally so yeah it worked out that's really awesome well but they're they're good people yeah so i used to always have that with me and you know and playing music is very helpful for me you know favorite Give me three favorite albums. Hmm. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be your favorites. Just yeah. three ones that you think of. Well, the best. I think the best album ever recorded is Abbey Road. Well, okay. I love that album. A lot of people will agree with you. So much. It's so good. Um, my favorite... I also am a huge Nirvana fan. And I love In Utero. Okay. Nevermind is also excellent. You um, and my wife will get along very well. She's a huge Nirvana fan. Yeah, I my, uh, you know, I was more prepared for you asking who my favorite musicians are because somebody asked me this the other day, and I was like, hadn't think about it. And now I was like thinking about it. The Beatles, you know, Paul Simon. I love his solo career as well as Simon and Garfunkel. Um, Nirvana and Guns N' Roses are like probably my four. Hmm. All of those guys. And then, truthfully, Less Than Jake is another band that I listen really? to oh, yeah, all the time. So I'll, I'll take no effects above, okay. above Less Than Jake. Yeah. But for me, it's uh, Tool, Pink Floyd, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. um, Faith No More, and okay. No yeah. Effects. Yeah. Those are mine. The Decline, I feel like, is just such a masterpiece. Did you watch the uh, live version? The, the live version yes. of Red Rocks? Yep, I did. Oh, my. It was amazing. Yeah. That's what it's like. I wish I would love for us to be able to do something like that right. one time. I've had it's so many so intense, buddies you know? say like they want to cover doing the decline. Yeah. It's just so precise. It's so precise. And all the harmonies. And, yep. I mean. And you have to know it so well. Like if somebody's learning it for that, it's going to be a disaster because the transitions and right. the way it goes back and forth. Well, you also have to be someone who plays that, that understands yeah. the, the. That style. The, the anticipatory yep. aggression of the, you yeah. know, the upstrokes and all that stuff is such oh, a big so deal, you know. Like yeah. if you didn't grow up playing, if you don't understand the ska kind of influence that goes into Ranted, No Effects, yep. any yeah. of the, you know, any basically West Coast punk from like eighty five to ninety five, yeah. then you're not going to get playing thirty minutes of that straight. You know? Totally. Yeah, less than Jake is. Um, I feel like for some reason their music is like just works with my brain chemistry because if I'm like if Leche I can't go to sleep one of their albums right what's that Leche Con Carne no was one? no that's a different band that's a different band so Less Than Jake right. had um, Losing Streak was their probably yeah. their biggest album in the 90s yes. and Hello Rock View followed that um, they're still re- they just released an album on Friday it's, it's excellent really? I might say yeah they sure. still release records and um, you know I always see them whenever they're here but if I like can't sleep on, putting on less than Jake will put me to sleep. That's like, awesome. It's the type of I don't know what it is, but something about the like the way that their melodies and their horn section it just it works really well. Before we bought this house, yeah. I was living in Sherman Oaks off Woodman, yeah. and um, 
uh, was living right around the corner from Fat Mike. Oh no way! Yeah, yeah. Like his, yeah. His ha- I know exactly where his house is. Yeah, they just he just had a, a like show there, a live stream yeah. from there. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I, I watched that. It was great. I love No Effects. They're, yeah. they're really good. That, they gave they really good. one of my yeah. old bands a uh, big advice. Um, I had a band called um, Ten Times a Day. Okay. And,